So I will start off. We'll give you an overview of, of, uh, of the activities and the collaboration. And we'll give you an update on the recent activities since the last time we made this presentation, which was uh, at the last Phosphor G in Florence. And then we will uh, provide you some inspiring, uh, um, inspiring notes around getting involved and what next steps could be. So standards, OGC standards, interoperability. As Cliff Klotman from the Open Geospatial Consortium said decades ago, interoperability does not happen by accident. What is this wheel doing here? And what do these wrenches have to do with anything around maps or features or data or catalogs? Well, I have a story. We, uh, Angelos and I, so I met Angelos in Greece and we decided to drive up here to, uh, uh, here to prison. And so we drove and we got all the way to Pristina and lo and behold, we went to uh, make a U-turn to grab something at a store, and guess what? Flat tire. Excellent. Within two hours, we had fixed the tire, or somebody else had fixed the tire, and we watched, and we were able to put the tire back on, and everybody was happy after that. It wasn't a happy moment at the beginning, but it ended up being a happy moment. Why? Because of interoperability. We didn't have to worry about what screws and which bolt from this car that came from Greece that is now in Kosovo. Everything just seemed to work. So interoperability doesn't happen by accident. It's very important that we're able to communicate on so many different levels. If anybody wants the real behind the scenes story, meet me at the gala and it will be a bit more colorful. I apologize to Angels in advance. So, the, o, the o, OGC and OS Geo collaboration. We've had a, a memorandum of understanding with OGC for quite some time. Um, in 2022, we renewed the memorandum of understanding, and um, we've, we had some very exciting news on, uh, on what the specifics were. We went, OS Geo in the land of OGC went from a, a single digit number of, of uh, individual memberships to a full organizational membership. OGS Geo, all these O's. OS Geo has now an associate membership at the OGC that puts us at on the table uh, at the table as an organization. We can uh, any of us in OS Geo who are charter members are able to work in standards working groups now. Are able to work in domain working groups. So if you want to work on an API standard, something bugs you about it, and you want to get involved, you can do so under the OS Geo umbrella. If you wanted to work in a domain. Um, in a domain working group who are using the standards and, and, and work on those issues, you can do the same. You have votes in those groups. You're able to vote on how, things, uh, on how things proceed. So you're able to help shape how things are going to work in, o, in, uh, in OGC. So this is a, a very exciting time and the MOU sort of facilitates that. There's been a number of joint code sprints. That's a big focus of the MOU. We will discuss those a little bit later on. And we're at you know, we're at our greatest time ever of this intersection and cross-pollination of uh, open geospatial standards and open source geospatial software. It's such a nice marriage of the technology and the standards to help us uh, move and help us put things together. So, one year later, what's happened? In the, in the time that we established the MOU, and in Florence, we made a call to, for the creation of and the definition of an OSGO Standards Committee. The scope of the OSGO Standards Committee is for, for coordinating and normalizing OSGO's position on any standards body. Our primary focus currently is the OGC, but that doesn't preclude us from working with other standards bodies to do the same thing. This includes, we have a, a liaison with ISO Technical Committee 211. For that, for example, so we created a standards committee in December 2020, uh, December 2022. That's a typo, and it aims to harmonize our uh, our efforts at any standards uh, body. So, if you want to be part of the standards committee, sign up at that wiki page. That's all you need to do. Put your name there, put what your uh, your interests are in the context of standards, and uh, you know participate as uh, as as you can. The more the merrier. We also have a standards mailing list where some interaction happens and communications happen. At this point, I will turn it over to Angelos with regards to further updates. Thank you, Tom. 
All right. So, yeah, we have uh, a lot of uh, activity from OSGO members uh, at OGC in the last uh, in the last year. Uh, we when we announced the the, the standards committee, uh, we got 12 OSGO charter members that registered on the OGC portal. Of course, in order to be part of the committee, you have to be a charter member so that you are officially affiliated with OSGO. And then uh, we had um, uh, two OSGO charter members attending the OGC meetings in the last uh, few months. And attending also six, uh, uh, we have six charter members uh, participating in the, in the standard working groups. Um, six OSGO projects have uh, been certified as uh, OGC compliant and have, be, uh, have become OGC reference implementations in the last, uh, well, not in the last year, but the, they have been doing this for, for the last uh, few years. So th this is a list of the projects that ha has been certified as reference implementations in, in various standards in OGC, and some of them actually are reference implementations of the OGC APIs. So we are trying to be there also uh, for developing the new APIs and to, to be there how, uh, on how the standards are evolving. Uh. All right, so uh, in September in 2022, there was a hybrid event uh, in London, and this was the metadata code sprint. Uh, and it was about focusing on specifications uh, which support catalogs and metadata, uh, such as OGC API records, stack, uh, JSON-FG, ISO uh, 1900 series. And there we had uh, members of OSGO attending online and in person, and uh, participated uh, in all the tutorials uh, through the mentor stream of the event. And, uh, and, and gave presentations about OSGO solutions and how they implement metadata and, and uh, catalogs in general. Then we had the web mapping code sprint. It happened in November, uh, sorry, yeah, November and the first day of December. It, it was also a uh, hybrid event. It, uh, it was held in, in Brussels, Belgium. And uh, there we, we focused on specifications about the maps on the web. Uh, again, we had several OSGO charter members attending and, of course, presenting tutorials and being mentors for participants that were sometimes new to how code sprints work. So we are using our code sprint experience and we are passing that to OGC uh, through mentoring uh, participants there. Then we had the QJS Hackfest uh, that happened in April uh, 2023. Uh, where we had a, a meetings and a session about OGC API and how this is becoming uh, developed currently in, in QGIS and how it's supported in QGIS. And of course, again, we had uh, two pull requests and two feature requests uh, that were integrated in QGIS core. And of course, we had the, the joint code sprint between uh, OSGO, OGC, and, and Apache Foundation, um, which was a hybrid event also. It happened in, in, in Switzerland. And of course, you can see here Tom presenting a, a GeoPython pr project and Ivan <laughs> presenting his work at the meeting through the web. Uh, this uh, for the, for this uh, joint code sprint, we had uh, 162 registered participants online and in person. We had 12 OSGO projects participating, and a lot, a, a big number of issues and pull requests ha that happened. And uh, this helps us continuously grow both OGC and OSGO. And OSGO on, on our side, we are trying to help with the software development as much as possible. And this is a list of the projects that were participating in this uh, joint code sprint. Okay, now I'm passing to Kodrina. Thank you. So, uh, oh, I have to push here. 
So from OGC side, uh, Team Engine uh, is um, has uh, is still going through the incubation uh, through the incubation process. Team Engine is an important uh, is an important tool uh, for testing web services and other resources written uh, in Java. So it's still in incubation. It's a community program uh, project. Sorry, uh, where? Okay, so next steps in getting involved, exactly as Tom was saying, this is a wonderful marriage, but it works only if we all participate, so uh, it, involvement it's, uh, is essential. So there are a few, um, a few uh, opportunities for that, you've seen uh, what we've done until, until now. Um, for next steps, we uh, would like to uh, raise your awareness related to the code sprint organized by OGC at uh, the fourth quarter of this year. Uh, it is open to all OGC working groups. It is led by OGC staff and um, it will be held in, in Europe and also there are, of course, sponsorship opportunities. Uh, well, call to action interest for, uh, for our OSGEO uh, charter members, so uh, you can participate in the innovation uh, programs of OGC. The open size persistent demonstrator would be, I would believe, something very of interest for, for the OSGEO community. Also, of course, the climate re resilience pilot. Please join, vote, and lead, and not only for the standards, but also for the domaining working, uh, working groups. Uh, making your software OGC compliant brings, of course, market uh, advantage to your, to your project. Um, lead and participate in, in code sprints, and uh, Angelos mentioned and explained very well why this would be, uh, this would be important for the OSGEO, OSGEO project. Uh, and important, communicate OSGEO interest, as, um, as Tom was mentioning, uh, in order to be in, uh, in OGC, to participate in OGC under uh, the OSGEO umbrella, you have to be a charter member, so that is the only, um, the only condition actually that uh, OSGEO, OSGEO makes, uh, so to make sure that the OSGEO voice is, uh, like we like to say, heard. Why do we want to cooperate? Well, with respect to standards projects, it connect to product implementations, of course. It's important for the code sprints on mm, specific standards that are in progress. With respect to the innovation pro program, which I believe is very important, it offers access to funding, um, it results in engineering reports, and of course, test beds and pilots. Um, as you've seen uh, for uh, the incubation, the OSGEO incubation program, again, it gives access to funding and uh, identify how you support standards. And of course, the compliance, uh, the compliance uh, program. And there is still the need of reference implementations and a lot of them are coming from the open source um, ecosystem, let's say, even if they are not part of the OSGEO family yet. Um, so maybe this uh, is just a very um, short uh, summary of what we have been uh, collaborating on. Uh, these things have already been mentioned, but just the things to take home. Um, so uh, OSGEO is an associate, has an associate membership now. As we've mentioned, the only requirement that OSGEO has is for the um, persons that go under our umbrella to be charter members and um, I think we have election uh, in September in September and the only um, the only um, requirement let's say is to be uh, proposed by someone in the community as a charter member someone who knows your work and knows you are a supporter in a way or another you're a user of OSGEO software or you document or uh, you are a supporter of the open source for geospatial uh, there is no limit on the number of participants so that's a that's a very good uh, very good thing you can participate in standards as well as in the domain working group and pilots and test beds, again, funding, which is an important thing. 
as uh, Tom was mentioning, we have um, uh, a committee established and uh, um, already annual joint code sprints that will just continue. 